Now we're going to uh, write the electronic configuration of different elements in different groups of the periodic table and we're going to find a pattern in which uh, the electronic configuration of different elements in different groups are quite similar. So we're going to start off with the, let's start off with group one. And uh, we can think of uh, two elements in group one. One is, let's say, uh, let's say it's lithium. So lithium's electronic configuration, if you, if you uh, remember the table that uh, is going to give you how the orbitals are going to be arranged from the lowest energy orbital to the highest energy orbital, that table is going to uh, look like this. Let's draw a table on the right hand side. It's going to be 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s and so on. The second uh, row is going to be 2p, 3p. Uh, 4p and then you have the third column which is going to start off with 3d 4d and in the fourth uh, column it's going to be just 4f and it keeps on going so you're going to have 5s uh, 5p then you have 5d and you have 5 f as well and it keeps on going we've discussed this uh, quite a number of times previously so it keeps on going uh, draw diagonals and you just need to follow the diagonals so you have and I think that would be enough so 1s is going to be filled first then 2s then after that 2p then you have, have 3s being filled and 3p is going to be filled 4s is going to be filled and 3d is going to be filled 4p is going to be filled and then 5s is going to be filled so we have lithium with us lithium has it has just three electrons so now lithium has three electrons the electronic configuration of lithium is going to be it's going to be 1s2 that's the first shell, uh, first orbital, and then in there's one electron left, which is going to go into the second s orbital of the second shell. So one electron over there. Let's take another element from group one, and uh, we can we already know sodium is part of group one. It has eleven electrons. We've probably done the electronic configuration of sodium as well. The two electrons in the one s orbital. There are two electrons in the two s orbital. Then you have the two px. 2py and 2pz orbital so you have uh, because 2p orbital is consisting of three p orbitals which are 2px, 2py and 2pz uh, each one is going to be completely filled because we have a, quite a number of electrons so two electrons in the s, two in the 2s, two in the 2p a total of six in the 2p orbitals that gives you a total of 10 electrons and the last orbital that's going to be filled is going to be the 3s orbital which will have only one electron now one thing uh, one pattern that's emerging is that every time if you talk about lithium it had an s orbital and it had one electron going into the s orbital that was the last orbital being filled similarly in sodium you had the 3s orbital and there was only one electron going into that orbital and that was the last orbital that was being filled so if i talk about potassium now now potassium is also in group one so I'm expecting that the last orbital to be filled is again going to be S and it's going to have one electron in it. So let's, uh, let's uh, talk about potassium. Potassium has 19 electrons. So the electronic configuration of 19 electrons is going to be 2 in the 1S. There'll be 2 in the 2S. Then you're going to have uh, 2PX, 2PY being filled and 2PZ they will be completely filled as well and then you have uh, after 2p you have the 3s orbital being filled so the 3s is going to have two electrons after 3s you have uh, the 3p orbital being filled so it's 3px 3py 3pz each one is going to have two electrons in it so that is a total of 18 electrons, 2 plus 2, 4, 4 and 6, that's 10 and 2, 12, 12 and 2, that's 16 and 18. So I have one electron left and if you look carefully, that one electron is going to go into the 4s orbital. So 4s orbital is going to have one electron left in it. So the pattern has clearly been shown and that is that the last electron going into 
uh, potassium is an S orbital and it has one electron in it. Similarly, the last electron going uh, being filled in sodium, that's an S orbital as well. It has one electron in it. And same is the case with lithium, which is also in group one. So the last electron in that case is also uh, being uh, filled in the S orbital. So whenever you have group one, the rule is that the electronic configuration, the outermost orbital is always going to be an S orbital. It could be the 2S orbital or the 3S orbital, or it could be part of that S orbital could be part of any shell, but it must have one electron and the last orbital is going to be an S, or S orbital. So that is one pattern that we, that has emerged. We can uh, discuss other patterns as well. Let's talk about group two now. Now group two, let's uh, just discuss two elements and see if there's a pattern in the electronic configuration. Let's talk about uh, beryllium. That's four electrons. The electronic configuration of beryllium is going to be, you can look at the table, there's going to be an S orbital, which is first S, one S orbital, which is going to be completely full. And there's going to be a two S orbital, the two electrons remain, and that's going to have two electrons in it as well. And similarly, let's talk about magnesium. Magnesium has a total of 12 electrons. So it's going to be 1s2, 2s2. After 2s2, you have uh, the 2px, 2py, and the 2p. Z orbitals, and each one is going to be completely full. And then after that, you're going to have the 3s orbital which is going to have two electrons in it so the pattern is cl has clearly emerged that for group two the last orbital that is being filled is always going to be an s orbital again as in group one except that the last orbital is going to have two electrons that s orbital is going to have two electrons similarly this uh, s orbital magnesium is also having two electrons now think of uh, let's think of uh, group three and I, I think the pattern has clearly emerged, so I don't need to actually actually write down all the, uh, do a lot of cases. Let's uh, quickly go over group three element. Let's talk about boron. Boron has five electrons. So the electronic configuration of boron is going to be one S2, two S2, and then you have Y n electron left and that's going to go into the 2px orbital and the 2py and the 2p z orbitals are going to be empty so the electronic configuration of the outermost orbital is going to be this it's there's going to be a p orbital and only one of the p orbital px is going to be completely filled so let's think of uh, Another group three element, it could be aluminium. Aluminium has 13 electrons, so its electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2. Then you have 2px, 2py, and 2pz, which are going to be completely full. And after that, you have uh, the 3s orbital, that's, that's a total of 12 electrons. So we're left with one electron that's going to go into the 3px orbital and the 3py and the 3pz are going to be empty orbitals. So again, if you look clear, carefully and you can see uh, the pattern, it's the outermost orbital for aluminum is again, a p orbital, only one electron is fell in the outermost p orbital, which is the px. So they're quite similar, except that the p orbitals belong to different shells, which is all right, but they are still p orbitals and they have one electron in the px suborbital let's discuss group four now uh, in group four you have uh, we can think of two elements in group four one is carbon and the other one is silicon so let's look at carbon first carbon has six electrons so since it has six electrons electronic configuration is going to be the there's going to be an s orbital in the first shell it's going to have two electrons then an s orbital in the second shell that's also going to have two electrons and then you're going to have uh, a 2px orbital, so you already have four electrons, only four more electrons are left, so that's going to be, it's going to be 2px, uh, 2py, 2pz, so there are going to be uh, one electron in the 2px, one in the 2py, and they are going to be zero electrons in the 2pz, so remember that uh, 
all the 2p orbitals, this is the 2p orbital, it comes after, it's going to be filled after the 2s, so it's at a higher energy level compared to the 2s. So the 2p orbital is, is uh, going to be filled singly first. A single electrons are going to enter each of the 2p orbitals, and after that, two electrons are going to occupy. So the outermost electronic configuration of uh, uh, carbon in group 4 is that it's uh, it has a p orbital which has two electrons in its outermost shell. Uh, let's think of silicon and compare it with silicon now. Silicon has 14 electrons. Now, for 14 electrons, uh, the electronic configuration is going to be 1s2, 2s2, then the 2p, uh, x, 2p, y, and 2p, z, the three 2p orbitals are going to be completely filled. The, these are completely filled, and after 2p, you have the 3s orbital, which is going to have uh, 2 electrons. So that's a total of 12 electrons. And after that, you're going to have, uh, you do, you've got 2 electrons left. So after the 2, uh, after the 3s orbital, you, uh, the 3p orbital is filled. So 2 electrons are going to be part of this 3p orbital. And, uh, this would be the outer electronic configuration of the outermost orbital in silicon. So if you look at carbon and silicon, what you'll notice is that the p orbital has two electrons in both of them, and uh, which means that two, p orb two of the p orbitals are half filled. Same is the case with silicon, and one of the p orbitals is, is completely empty. So that's group four for you. So here's a pattern that in group 4, always whatever the electronic configuration, the end last orbital that to be filled is going to be a P orbital and it's going to have just two electrons in it. Uh, moving quickly to uh, group 5, uh, you have nitrogen in it, 7 electrons, uh, let's quickly do its electronic configuration, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p, x, 2p, y, and 2p, z. So four electrons over here. We've got three electrons left. So these p orbitals are going to be filled in a single manner first. So this is the outer electronic configuration where you have a p orbital which has three electrons in it. And each of the p orbitals, p, x, p, y, p, z, are all half filled. Uh, compare that to phosphorus, which is also in group, uh, it's in group uh, five as well. So comparing this to phosphorus, it would be 1s2, phosphorus would be 1s2, 2s2, the 2px, 2py, and 2pz orbitals are going to be completely filled, whereas then you're going to have uh, 3s2, and then the 3p orbital will be half filled, 3p, Z, it's going to have one electron each in its orbital. So this is going to be half filled. So look at the electronic configuration of nitrogen and phosphor, which are both in group five. And the outer the electronic configuration of the last orbital that's being filled is that it has a p orbital that is half filled. This one also has a p orbital, which is half filled. They belong to different shells, but they are still p orbitals and they are both half filled. So uh, moving on. Group 6. Now group 6 is, uh, let's say, it's oxygen. So oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2px, 2py, and 2p, z. It has uh, 8 electrons, so 4 electrons are filled in the 1s and the 2s orbital, so you're left with 4. So this will be filled. Uh, in a single manner first, and then the fourth electron is going to come and uh, completely fill the 2px orbital. So this would be the outer electronic configuration of an oxygen atom, where the outer p orbital has, uh, one of the orbital has two electrons, and the other two have just one electron each. Compare this to another group 6 element, that which is sulfur, which has 16 electrons. So you have 1s2, 2s2, 2p, x, 2p, y, 2pz each having two electrons in it and then you have uh, uh, 3s2 and then you have 3px, 3py and 3pz so you have that's 12 electrons you have four electrons left uh, uh, let's quickly fill four electrons so it's going to be filled 
uh, one electron each is going to be filled first and then the fourth electron is com going to completely fill the 3px orbital. So this is the outer electronic configuration of uh, sulfur. So you can clearly see that the two outer electronic configuration or the last uh, orbital that is being filled has exactly the same electronic configuration except that they are that they belong to different shells and we can continue this with uh, group 7 let's uh, compare fluorine and chlorine now fluorine is going to be 1s2 2s2 that's 4 we've got 5 or 5 electrons left which are going to fill the 2px, 2py and 2pz orbital so filling 5 electrons in the 2p orbital would be 1 electron would first enter each of the 3 orbitals and then the 4th and the 5th electron are going to enter the 2px and 2py and make and will make them completely full so this is the outer uh, this is the electronic configuration of the outer orbital for fluorine where it, to be a, where one of the px orbital is completely full one of the py orbital is completely full but one of the pz orbital is half filled let's uh, compare this with chlorine which is also in group 7 comparing this with chlorine it's going to be 1s2 2s2 then you're going to have the 2px 2py and the 2pz orbitals all of them are going to have two electrons each in them then you're going to have the 3s2 and the 3px 3py and 3pz and that is now a total of 17 electrons so so you have the exact same electronic outer electronic configuration the orbital is again going to be a B orbital in chlorine as well and two of the P orbitals will be completely full whereas one would be half filled.